Mortal Kombat is my second favorite gaming franchise, and on this channel I've been working my way through each of the games, ranking their endings and finishing moves in separate videos. It's been a blast seeing my community's responses to each of those videos and their thoughts on what endings are the best. Doing this and talking to my community about these games gave me a great idea. Why not ask my community to rank the games? This is what caused me to create this franchise bracket, where I would ask my community each day to vote on their favorite of each matchup, with the winner moving on to the next round. To give everyone's favorite a second chance, if they should fall, I built in a loser's bracket that all of the defeated games would filter into, with the final round being between the winner of the main bracket and the winner of the loser's bracket. It took three weeks or so but finally, my community chose their ultimate Mortal Kombat champion, but their decision has me pleasantly surprised. You see, I couldn't vote on any of my own polls, and in this video, I'm going to run through all of the matchups to discuss what I would have picked and my thoughts on what my community voted for. And at the end of this video, I'll lay out the final ranking of all games based on what my community favored most in each round of the bracket. And in the event of a tie, whichever game received more votes over the course of the whole bracket will supersede the other. If you like this video, please join my community by subscribing to the channel. It's full of a lot of cool guys and gals like Marcos, who we'll be seeing again in a few matchups over the course of this video. I loved doing this bracket, and I would love to do another. Leave a comment down below with what gaming franchise my community should rank next. And while you're there, leave a like as an offering to the algorithm gods. With all of that established, you're watching Real Deal Games, and let's dive right in with the round one matchups. Starting out, I designed the franchise bracket to be chronological in order, in that I set up the bracket so that each game would be initially paired up with its nearest sequel or spinoff, in terms of original release date. This made the first round, Mortal Kombat 1992 versus Mortal Kombat 2. Dynamite said it best about these two games, when he said MK2 is more polished and more content, but I always liked MK1's aesthetic and setting better. And this is where I fall on these two as well. MK2 definitely deserves the win in here, however MK1992 has always had the better aesthetic and vibe. I honestly think that's one of the main reasons the first Mortal Kombat film from 95 was more successful than its sequel. Shao Kahn is a better boss than Shang Tsung and the overall content present in MK2 makes it the clear winner, for me and for my community too, clearly. Match 2 is a tough match, not because the choice is difficult, but because the games making up this second vote aren't that great at all. I don't think it's a stretch to say that everyone thinks these two games are the worst in the franchise, However, I do push back against Special Forces being the absolute worst. Because of the control issues and mythologies, I would actually put that game lower because even though Special Forces is boring and repetitive, it is at least playable with a modern gaming mindset. Mythologies does more for the overall lore of the franchise, at least for Timeline 1.0, so I won't really argue with my community putting it a bit higher. Match 3 is the only matchup where my community completely agreed with one another about the winning game. Even though I do like the more consistent focus to endings, finishing moves, and roster in the original MK3, I can't deny that Ultimate MK3 is overall the better game because of its additions. I differ from the MK section of my community in terms of MK Trilogy. I'm not personally a fan of this game. It's cool how Trilogy is the first MK game to be made exclusively for consoles, however this game has some downsides. The N64 and PS1 versions have different issues as a result of the hardware they're on, and the issues present in both versions make it so that I would rather play Original 3 or Ultimate. With that being said, MK4 is not a particularly strong game itself, so it's not surprising my community would put Trilogy above it. I've personally got a soft spot for the arcade version of 4, so that's what I would have voted for here. Early polygonal graphics are something I personally find extremely beautiful, so I love the look of games from that time period between the late 90s and early 2000s. Match 5 is as easy a pick for me as it was for my community. Just like Trilogy, Gold has some issues not present in its arcade release. Deadly Alliance is the clear winner here. Match 6 pits two of the main MK games from my childhood against each other. And I'm not alone in this. 
Dynamite had this to say about this matchup. I played both when I was young, so I can say both is peak Mortal Kombat. Shaolin Monks, I think, edges out with how much fun me and my bro had playing together, along with its bonkers story. And while Shaolin Monks doesn't edge over deception for me, I do think it's one of the best games to ever release on the PS2. Shaolin Monks is actually the way I played MK2 for the first time, because I never had access to the arcade cabinet growing up. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't happy Deception won here. It's my favorite game in the franchise, so it would definitely have been my pick here. Over time, these pools started to get more and more attention, and more people from my community started to chime in on the matches. Even some who either don't play the games or don't know them that well. Mr. Dom had this to say. I don't know. I'm going with DC because that sounds cooler. Mr. Dom has clearly played some of the games, but it's unclear whether he's played these two. However, I don't think this discounts his opinion, as the cover of a game is the first metric by which anyone judges whether they should play something or not. Think about the old adage, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. This statement, while true, is antithetical to the way people function. We always judge things by their cover, so Mr. Dom's vote for Versus DC based on its cover and title makes sense to me. When I was younger, those two elements were the primary reason I didn't want to play the game, but that was the opinion of a far, far younger me. One, I would recant almost immediately upon playing Batman Arkham Asylum for the first time. All that being said, Armageddon is the better game in terms of content, story, and gameplay, and is what I would have voted for here as well. For match 8, I wish Mr. Dom would have weighed in here too, but if he did vote, it's likely he went with Injustice. MK9 is a clear winner for me, since it's my second favorite game in the franchise, through its combination of lore, story, and gameplay. I actually expected Injustice 2 to put up a bit more of a fight against MKX. X is the clear better game in terms of gameplay between the two, but Injustice 2 does have better single-player offerings, making it the game between the two that is more future-proof. Considering X is now 9 years old, I figured this would have drawn more people to Injustice 2 as well, but I also can't say I'm surprised X ultimately won with a landslide. X just has the best gameplay out of anything Ed Boon has ever made, and this isn't the last time we'll be talking about that. And the final match of round 1, the 10th match, is MK11 and MK1, and this is the first time in this community ranking where I found myself confused about the outcome. I've disagreed with the ultimate result in MK4 versus Trilogy, but I understood why my community would put Trilogy over 4, but in this case, it is hard for me to understand someone putting MK1 over MK11. The story in both are pretty lackluster for slightly different reasons, and both narratives are held back by the hourglass arc of the lore. The character lineup in both games is pretty strong, although overall, MK11 does a better job of branching the gap between the new NRS characters and classic characters though I do like how MK1 brings back a focus on 3D era characters like Lee Mei, Ashra, Havoc, and Nitara. In terms of gameplay, I prefer MK11 over 1 because I like the customizable movesets and progression system. Unlike MK1, grinding towers and matches in 11 is fun because of the constant drip feed of cosmetic unlocks, and 11 also has the best crypt the series has ever seen. With these two elements, what MK1 brings to the table is slim pickings in comparison. MK1's invasion seem like a fun mode on paper, but there are some things about it, like the constant load times, frame stutters, and overly common armor on every enemy attack in nearly every single match. The cameo system is neat, but I would have preferred complete toolkits on the individual characters instead. If it weren't obvious, MK11 would be my pick here. And with that, the round 1 matchups are concluded. For the most part, I agreed with my community on many of their choices, but as we got deeper down the list, my opinions differ in many ways from those in my community community. The first match of round 2 was little more than a formality, as MK2 is clearly better than Mythologies. I'm not sure who voted for Mythologies over MK2, but I'm sure fond childhood memories played a key factor. I actually agree with the outcome of round 2's match 2. Ultimate MK3 is what I would have chosen here too. However, others like Chummy disagree. They had this to say, IMO, Trilogy is just UMK3 but more. And I can see why Chummy thinks this way. On paper, Trilogy does have more characters and therefore more 
more content than Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. However, as I said before, there are some hardware restrictions that made software problems for the overall presentation and performance of Trilogy. Those issues are why I, like my community, would put Ultimate over Trilogy. I knew the outcome of Match 3 as soon as it came up, and my community did not let me down. Burnt Sock and Marcos made some excellent points in regards to this one. Burnt Sock said, Sorry Deadly Alliance, it's not me, it's you. And Marcos said, I always find it weird that a lot of iconic characters, Kitana, Johnny, Sonya, Lau, Reptile, ETC, were absent in Deception. Not saying it was a bad thing, of course. Despite that, Deception was way more fun with all of the minigames and Conquest. And I think what Marcos says here demonstrates the differing tastes of MK fans. I personally like it when MK games feature a few new characters with each new release, and I personally wish classic characters would die more often to make room for newer combatants. Shifting away from the classic era of MK with Deception was a good move, and it adds to the overall package Deception has to offer. While not every character is a winner, like Cobra and Kira, some are truly excellent, like Ashra and Havoc. Since Deception is my favorite game in the franchise, it would get my vote here. Deadly Alliance is just one of the weaker games in the franchise, and functioned more as a test run for gameplay systems Deception would perfect. I enjoy Armageddon, but there's no way it beats MK9. NRS's first outing saved the franchise from being finished, and even though Armageddon has a cool minigame and more characters, creating combos and playing MK9 is far, far better. If MK1 beating MK11 wasn't enough evidence on its own, the final match of round 2 makes it clear that my community has some serious MK1 fans due to just how many votes it managed to steal away from MKX. Now I don't hate MK1, but there's no world where the gameplay in NRS's most recent game is better than MKX, and gameplay is really the only metric to judge the two games on since they lack substantial and satisfying single player modes or stories. Foron said it best in their comment, Not gonna lie, MK1 sucked. I don't think you have to hate a game to recognize its shortcomings, and MK1 has plenty of failings. I hope Boone and his team are able to iron out those in a year or two. The round 3 matchups are when the games became closer in quality. Given the way buys worked out in the bracket at this time, I had to figure out the victors from some matches like this one before I was able to figure out which game was going to be the champion of the winner's half of the bracket. For a long time, this match between Deception and 9 was close, but Deception was able to crawl a little ahead in the final hours of the poll, and while I would have definitely voted for Deception given the option, I would have been fine with the match going either way because I can definitely see how and why someone would prefer the 2.5D combat system created for MK9 over the 3D system in Deception. For match 2, I would have personally chosen Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 here for the same reason our friend Chummy gave. I would have said MK2, but the difficulty is too high for my garbage playstyle. Old arcade games are well known for cheating, and MK2 is one of the more egregious ones in this regard. UMK3 has cheating too, I'm sure, but it does seem to be to a lesser degree than any of the games that came before it. It hurt seeing Deception knocked out of the main bracket in match 3 of round 3, but MKX is definitely one of the better games in the franchise, and I wouldn't be shocked to see a majority of people put it in their personal first or second place. It is my third favorite game in the franchise, but if it had just had a bit more single player offerings, it would be my favorite too, because it does have the best gameplay in the series. At least I wasn't alone in my wanting Deception to win, as Sierra says, Dragon. Such a simple statement, and within it, a lot is conveyed. My audience isn't exclusively full of MK fans, so there were undoubtedly some people in the polls voting for games based off the cover art, which as I said before, I feel is valid since the cover art of anything plays a big part in whether or not we're willing to try it out. And the MK Dragon on Deception's cover is one of the better iterations of that logo too. I decided to put the final round of the main bracket with the rest of the round 3 matchups because I knew which game was going to win the instant I saw what was going against each other. There's no world where MK MK2 beats MKX. Let's just be honest with ourselves here. With that, MKX reserved its place in the final round, and its opponent would be the winner of the loser's bracket.
I designed the loser's bracket as a second chance for everyone's individual favorite game to crawl its way back up into the final round. To speed up the bracket because I was concerned about poll fatigue setting in for my audience, I decided to make each match in the loser's bracket be a battle royale between sets of three or four games. The first set looks like this. Gold may not have had a chance, but Shaolin Monks vs Mortal Kombat 11 is an interestingly tough choice. I would likely pick Shaolin Monks for its uniqueness, story, and co-op campaign, which is more or or less what our good friend Marcos thought as well when he said, Hard choice. MK11 is a good game, but the open world aspect of SM does it for me. Why haven't they repeat it? Is NRS afraid of success or what? And as I said in my response, a sequel to Shallon Monks was in the pre-production step before being canned by the studio making it, as Ed Boon confirmed in a 2010 Game Informer interview. It would have been cool to see that game, and I'm sure dreams of a Shallon Monks remaster is partly what led to its victory over MK11. I think in most franchises, tying with the first game in the series would be a particularly bad sign, but I don't think that's true in MK. The first Mortal Kombat title just has this vibe to it that has never been replicated in all of gaming history. I would have voted for the original myself for this reason, but it would have been a close call with Injustice 2. Because of the tie between Injustice 2 and MK1992, I decided to have both games move into the last match of round 1. Burnt Sox comment on this poll definitely solicited a laugh from me. In it he said, Versus DC is simply the best MK title to date. No contest. Although I do have to say how surprised I am that Versus DC got as many votes as it did. That game is notoriously lackluster. Chaos Lord added to the discussion by saying, I never played the 1992 Mortal Kombat game. MK vs DC sucked in both gameplay and story. Injustice 2 was not as good as the original, in my opinion, but still better than MK vs DC. Which is not something I personally agree with. Injustice 2 is more fun than the first game in my opinion, and really the only thing the first Injustice has over it is a slightly better base roster. Injustice 2's DLC characters put it far ahead though. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see where my community fell in the debate of Injustice vs Injustice 2 because MK3 narrowly beat it in match 3. The one or two people voting for Special Forces are having one hell of a lark, I swear. You gotta love people throwing their hat in for the underdog. <laughs> Injustice 2 had an easier time getting more votes than MK1992 this time around, but I do feel that is partly because MK3 likely stole a few. Shallon Monk's winning handily here makes perfect sense to me, as it is the game I would have chosen personally too. I was definitely happy to see it move into round 2. <laughs> For the first match of round 2, MK1 comes in swinging with another upset. Shaolin Monks is what I would have chosen personally. The comment section on this one blew up a little too, so let's look at some of the comments and my responses to them. Lewis or Louis Dally says, Don't care what no one says, Deadly Alliance was my first Mortal Kombat, and although it didn't have a lot of stable characters, I think the changes they made gameplay and story-wise for its time solidifies it as the best of the three. Now I understand where he's coming from here because Deadly Alliance really shifted MK away from the classic style. However, for me, out of the three titles, I would put it in the middle. I think I do like Deadly Alliance more than MK1, but I definitely don't like it more than Shaolin Monks. Emily Allen Card said Deadly Alliance breathed new life into the franchise, expanded the mythos, and was the building block for easily the best injury, and I think she meant entry, into the franchise, Deception. Now this is the real opinion here. Now I think Shaolin Monks is the game that should have won here over MK1. However, Emily Alucard does bring up a great point in regards to Deadly Alliance here in that it really did revitalize the franchise coming into the new millennium, and it did set up the best game in the franchise, at least in terms terms of my opinion, and clearly theirs as well. Arthur Santos said MK1 is so weird because everyone feels too nice in a way. I know it's cause the timeline stuff, but uh, something feels off about it, and I agree with this one too. I understand why this is, because since Liu Kang made the new timeline, he of course would tone down the violence a little bit to create that kind of infinite peace that he was going for. However, it does make it not feel like Mortal Kombat in a lot of ways, and I hope that's something that they kind of refine a little bit for MK13. Murad here says that he would vote for Shallon Monks, and that's what I agree with too. I think what he says here is completely true. Deadly Alliance really hasn't held up. It really was something at the turn of the century that was something special, but uh, in retrospect, it doesn't
doesn't really hold up even in terms of its contemporary 3D era titles. And MK1 is, it needs work. So I'm always shocked when MK1 comes in swinging on some of these poles. In the next round, Armageddon had it pretty easy within this matchup. I mean, it's up against Trilogy and Mythologies. So if we're being honest, did it really have a competition at all? I can see how some people out there would prefer Trilogy, but I don't see how Mythologies is even in the same ballpark in terms of quality of either of these games. Emily Alucard once again had a great comment under here too where she said, Armageddon is probably my second favorite entry in the entire franchise. The story mode was a lot of fun, even if not as ambitious as Deception. The story was entertaining and the roster was phenomenal. So many different characters to play, it was a ton of fun. I like the addition of aerial combat and the stage selection is pretty nice too. And I agreed with her. I said, I like Armageddon a lot as well. I ranked all of the endings in that game recently and I was surprised at just how many of them are actually pretty good. It's been so long I had viewed them all that I didn't remember many of them. And this is true, I did rank these recently, like I mentioned towards the beginning of this video, that I've been going through ranking all of the endings for every game in the franchise, and Armageddon's really did hold up in a lot of ways, and I also like how Emily Alucard brings up the aerial combat here. Armageddon is the first game to have that aerial combat, which MK1 brings back. Now I do think the aerial combat in MK1 does need a little bit more to it, and that's something I hope that they refine as they move into MK13. I really do think MK1 is going to be the deadly alliance of this era of NRS in that it has a lot of potential and there's a lot of foundation being laid with the new combat approach and the cameo system that could be really cool in the future and lore wise there's a lot of good lore that's being brought up. It's moving us away from the hourglass arc which is a terrible arc, possibly the worst arc in the entire MK franchise and I'm really excited to see what NRS is going to do for MK13 because I really do think it's their chance to reset their goal and their long-term vision for the franchise. And speaking of Armageddon and MK1 in the same breath, in the next round they came up against each other and wouldn't you know it, MK1 is what my community voted for. Now this is actually on the higher end of votes too with 56. Now my community's not large, I've only got 606 subs, so 56 is a pretty nice amount. Now I don't know where Armageddon would place for me personally in my overall list of the franchise. It wouldn't be in the top five, but even though it wouldn't be in my top five, it would be much higher than MK1 at least. I am always, like I said, so surprised at how highly members of my community regard MK1, considering its persistent issues. Armageddon is one of the games typically considered middling by a lot of people within the community, so that could be the reason why. I do think Arthur Santos had the right opinion on this one when he said, it's Armageddon. Need I say more? LOL. Now for me, he doesn't need to say more, but other people in the community <laughs> did not agree with him. This means MK1 K1 moved into the final round of the losers bracket, the winner of which would be up against MKX for the crown of community voted best game in the entire franchise. The image on the screen is a little misleading because I took this screenshot after I had finished counting this poll. At the time when the winner was decided, Deception was in the lead by 3% over MK9, meaning Deception earned its rematch against MKX in the final round of the whole bracket. I did let this one run a little longer than I typically allow for many of the previous matches as well. MK1 actually had a pretty commanding lead early on, as we can see in Marcos's comment where he said, how is MK1 on top? For me personally, MK MK9 should get the gold. And at the time of Marcus's comment, MK9 was the other game in close contention. As Chummy weighed in by saying, I know it's going to be MK9, but UMK3 holds a special place in my heart, as it's the first MK game I really played on my own. However, Emily Alucard agreed with me about Deception, saying, 1000% MK Deception, everything it did as far as expanding our immersion into the MK universe, its fantastic gameplay sage selection, myriad of modes and options to play were so much fun. The atmosphere was great. That intro is pure classic. Onaga is my favorite final boss. I like how the endings would in some cases build off of each other like in Deadly Alliance, but all show us different aspects of the conflict. And at the time of my response, MK1 really was looking like it was going to be the winner of the poll. And I thought MK1 was going to go up against MKX. So at first I allowed this round to continue on longer than usual to give time for the stalemate between MK1 and MK9 to break. They were kind 
kind of leapfrogging over each other every other hour or so. But during the time I slept and worked, Deception blasted into the front and the new fight was between Nine and It. Just like when these games came up against each other before, I would have been fine with either, but I'd be once again lying if I said I wasn't happy, Deception ended up getting that last little percent it needed at the end. Oh! And at last, the franchise bracket was coming to a close with the rematch of Deception and MKX. I had expected this to turn out the same way as last time, with MKX having a fairly commanding lead, but much to my surprise, that is not how this went down. It took 80 hours or so for these games to no longer be tied, and when I say that, I don't mean that I waited to give each game a proper chance to pull ahead, like I did in the final round of the losers bracket. Every single time I checked the poll every two hours or so, when I wasn't working or sleeping, Sleeping, it was a complete 50-50 tie. In fact, the instant I saw one of the games pull ahead, I announced the winner because this matchup was the closest out of the entire bracket. Deception obviously would be my pick here, but I am definitely surprised MKX didn't pull ahead, given the way it dominated their first match. Regardless, I am happy with the ultimate winner of the bracket, but to summarize, I want to go over my community's ranking of each game as aggregated by a combination of their number of victories, votes, and comments specifically discussing them. At most, I only ever got 56 votes on any single one of my polls, so this ranking is by no means empirical in its data. However, since I only have 606 subscribers, I never expected it to be. That being said, I found the aggregated final list for my community's ranking of MK games pretty interesting, starting with number 20. I don't think it's shocking to anyone that Special Forces is the bottom game on this list. The game is not great as an MK game or as a game in general, yet I personally might have put mythologies lower just because of the way the game plays. From here on out though, the community ranking is going to be a bit odd. Number 19. Gold is a worse running version of MK4, so it being lower does make a lot of sense, but it being the second worst game in the franchise wouldn't have happened if it was up against weaker games. Mythologies likely didn't come in second worst with its aggregated rating because it was able to get an early win against Special Forces, which Gold was not so lucky at. Number 18. Possibly the most shocking part of the community ranking for me is MK11 being so incredibly low. Its placement on this list is once again likely caused by it having some pretty bad matchups. Firstly, being up against MK1 was bad for MK11 just because there was a subset of my community that clearly really likes that game. And secondly, the game went up against Shallon Monks in the losers bracket, which even I, someone who really likes MK11, would have put over it. I do think my community score for this game would have been higher if it were up against some of the upcoming games on the list, though it is clear my community as a whole is a bit lower in MK11 than I am. Number 17. Mythologies being number 17 shows how much the matchups and small size of my community really play into the aggregated rankings of these games. I could buy Mythologies being over gold for certain people, but it being over 11 is a hard thing to believe, even when nostalgia is taken in as a factor. Being up against Special Forces in round 1 was an easy win for Mythologies, meaning it got to see two rounds of the main bracket and one in the losers, leaving it with a win-loss rate of 33%, which is higher than the previous three games' rate of 0%. Number 16. MK4 being number 16 is, I think, a pretty fair rating for this game. MK4 is not a bad game, but it is flawed, more so than a lot of the games coming up. I personally would have put it higher than the next game on my list, but I could see the argument for it being worse than number 15. Number 15. Versus DC is not a great game, but it does have the cash of having a cool mashup of DC and MK. With a better story and arcade ending lineup, I myself would like this game better because I can overlook some bad gameplay elements when a good story is the trade-off. If the gameplay is at a baseline serviceable, versus DC can be fun to play long enough to earn a character ending or two, so in that hypothetical scenario where the endings are better, I could see myself putting it over MK4. For massive fans of DC, I could see the argument why it's better than MK4 as well. Number 14. Deadly and Alliance is not a game I personally like beyond the lore, it adds to the franchise. Burnt Sock's comment where he says, sorry Dudley Alliance, it's not me, it's you, sums up my feelings regarding this game and clearly my communities too. 
Number 13. Every game from this point onward is something I would put in the 7 out of 10 or higher range, so the nuance between each game is a little more muddied and definitely impacted by personal experience with each title. As such, Injustice being at number 13 and other games following are going to feel like a jumbled mess for everyone watching this video and myself too, at least until we get to the top 3. Injustice being on the lower end of the good game part of this ranking does make sense to me, considering the fact that it went up against MK9 first and the fact that my community put it beneath MK3. I personally would have put this above MK3, but I also recognize the retro appeal of all three MK3 based titles. Number 12. The only place I differ with my community in terms of MK1992 is putting it lower than Trilogy and base MK3. The gameplay is definitely on the more limited side of the main numbered entries, but I personally like the simplicity of it. 1992's Mortal Kombat would have likely rounded out the top 10 for me, but I can't say I'm surprised it's lower for my community because it became quickly clear that they place a higher premium on the nuances between the three MK3 games than I do. Number 11. MK3 places the lowest out of the three MK3 era titles for my community, and that makes sense to me. On the surface, it has less content than Ultimate or Trilogy, though I personally don't care for the latter of those two too much because of the load times I've mentioned before. Reading old reviews of MK3, I've noticed that at the time of its release in 95, it was met with a more lukewarm reception than its contemporaries, which possibly explains its lower place on this list too, since most of the people in my community fall within the 25 to 34 year old range. People in my community either didn't play this game because it came out right around the time they were born or shortly before, or it came out when they were young and was instantly overshadowed with its revised versions. Number 10. This one being number 10 kind of hurt me a little bit because I love Injustice 2. It wouldn't have placed too much higher for me personally, but I would have probably put it around the 7 or 8 slot, which on a ranking of 20 games is a significant difference. I haven't actually done a ranking of this franchise myself yet, so if that's something you all want to see, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. Number 9. I actually expected Trilogy to be one place higher in my community's list considering the number of votes it received each time it showed up relative to its competition, and it would have if the games above it weren't so good at actually winning their matchups. This is just the last game that would likely fall in the 7 out of 10 rating for most people, and the game Games above it are more in the 8 out of 10 or higher range for games in this franchise. Number 8. Shaolin Monks would likely place in my personal top 5 for the franchise, so it stings seeing it blocked from its proper status. This is another game that fell victim to my community's love of MK1, and if it had won its matchup against MK1 in the loser's bracket, it would likely have made it into the number 6 spot. Number 7. There are some people like Emily Alucard who love Armageddon, and I would put it right around this place as well myself. I can see the argument for why Armageddon is beneath many of the upcoming games on this list, so I can't say I disagree too much with my community on the ultimate placement of this game. Number 6. MK2 placed this high since it made it all the way to the final round of the winner's bracket, losing only to MKX. MK2 is definitely one of the best games of the classic era of MK, however there is one that my community placed just a little higher. Number 5. Ultimate MK3 placed the highest of the MK3 era games games in the franchise and is a great game to round up the top 5. I'm not surprised at all by its placement since UMK3 is chock full of content, characters, and awesome gameplay, and really the only thing that shocked me was that it placed lower than number 4 on this list. Considering the number of people in my community who seem to love the mid-90s era of MK, I half expected this game to end up in the top 3, but as we'll see shortly, those games are a tough bunch to beat. Number 4. Number 4 being MK1 is the wildest part of this MK rank. I'm personally not the biggest fan of MK1, and I know there are others in my community such as Marcos who seem to have the same opinion I do. The story isn't that great, the endings are lackluster, and the single player content is honestly some of the worst in the entire series. The gameplay can be fun at times, but the progression system is pretty predatory and gives off free to play live service vibes, which I'm not a fan of, meaning that MK1 placing this high is where my community and I diverge on MK opinions. All of that being said, there are some things to love about MK1, and I can see why a subset of my community would love this game so much. The cameo system does provide some great opportunities for long combo strings, and the vast number of them and how they interact with the movesets of the core cast creates lots of opportunities for experimentation and practice mode exploration. The invasion mode has potential, and on the surface it looks like a great way to play this game in a single player way, even though the overuse of enemy armor kills the mode for me. On top of all of this, the fatality 
fatalities are definitely top of the line, and the cast itself is pretty great, with a nice bit of variety and mix of combat styles. I am surprised that MK1 plays so high, but even with the push from the fans of this game, it couldn't beat what I suspect are the top three games for most MK fans. Number three, MK9 saved the franchise, and for that reason alone, it always deserves to be in the top 10 somewhere. This is actually my second favorite game in the franchise, so my perception of this game and the perspective of my community doesn't differ all too much. The story is pretty great, and the single player content is all good stuff as well. The cast perfectly represents the classic era of the franchise, and this game's iteration of Shao Kahn is possibly the best boss fight the series has ever seen. Rounding out the package are a pretty good set of endings, great finishing moves, and a return to the 2.5D style of gameplay, although in a far better way than ever before. Number 2. Beating out MK9 is MKX, the winner of the main bracket and nearly the best game in the franchise. It is only in the final hour that MKX was beaten by the number one pick by the community. And it's not surprising in the least to me that MKX would play so high. X has the best gameplay in the entire franchise hands down, and if it had better single player offerings and a better story, it would be my favorite game in the franchise. I appreciate the lore and story of these games though, and MKX is when the franchise started its downward trend leading into the hourglass arc. With one vote, MKX would have been number one, but that honor is reserved for another. Number one. Deception is my favorite game in the franchise, so when Deception was knocked into the loser's bracket during the third round of matchups by MKX, I was concerned. I wasn't confident that the game was going to get a second chance at the title, and even if it did, it'd be up against X again, making the prospect of it winning unlikely. However, Deception was able to beat MK9 and MK1 in the same poll, earning its second chance at the title, and after an 80-hour stalemate, Deception got the one, literally one, vote needed to pass up MKX and steal the crown. Deception Deception has the best lore and story in the franchise, a great cast of characters, and Onaga, the best villain the series has ever seen, and I suspect that these features are what really put it ahead of all the other games in the franchise for my community. I'm sure puzzle and chess combat also contributed towards its rise to the top. I was pleasantly surprised to see Deception take the crown, as I expected MKX to be in first place by a commanding lead, since I know that a majority of MK fans would put that game in the number one slot of their personal list. If my demographics skewed a bit lower in the age range, MKX would have likely won, since it would have been the first MK game for a lot of people in the 18 to 24 age range. Range. As it stands, Deception definitely got a boost from my community's demographics since its release coincided with their childhood, much in the same way it did for me. Either game, MKX or Deception, deserves the top slot because it was a razor's thin edge separating the two, and these two games placing so high shows me that my community has some good taste. And that's the end of the first ever Rail Deal Games Community Franchise Bracket. I love this entire process and I would love to do it again, with some refinements for another franchise down the line. Let me know in the comments section below which franchise would be cool to do this with, and if there's some interest, I'll definitely do another video like this to debrief the whole process. How does your personal ranking of games line up with the way my community's ranking turned out? Leave a comment below telling me all about it, and while you're there, please like and share. If you're not currently a part of my community, and you think what I've done here is pretty cool, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out the next time a community ranking for a gaming franchise goes down. If you enjoyed this video, you may even enjoy some of my other ones on the screen. Regardless of what you choose to do, have an awesome day, gamers.